In the days after the incident, Captain Piché and Dirk de Jager were called before the investigators and asked in detail about their decisions and actions. Years later, these findings have still not been published. What follows are possible explanations for the course of events that night based on known facts and expert opinion. I temp low and oil pressure high on number two. The warnings of high oil pressure and low oil temperature from the number two engine on the right wing would not have led the pilots to suspect that there was already a major fuel leak. The indications that were being presented uh, with respect to the oil system would probably not give the crew any indications. Uh, um, they may have questioned what was causing uh, the, uh, the erroneous or strange indications, uh, but uh, there's nothing certainly in, in my mind or their training I think that would have uh, triggered them to suspect that uh, you know, a fuel system might be involved bet you it's a computer problem. Even though the pilots thought they had a computer error, the oil warnings were actually correct and were the first indication of a much more serious problem. Fuel imbalance warning. Haven't seen that before. When the fuel imbalance warning came up 20 minutes later, showing less fuel in the right wing than the left, it seemed unconnected with the oil alarms. This could have reinforced Captain Pichet's idea that he was facing a series of computer errors. Do not apply this procedure if a fuel leak is suspected. Despite his doubts, Pichet was obliged to follow Airbus procedure to correct the imbalance. He opened the crossfeed valve. Wing crossfeed on. But was following the checklist enough? You just can't. Uh idly flip switches in response to commands from the computers and anticipate that all will be well at the end of it. You know, the, once the checklist is complete, uh, we can sit there fat, dumb and happy. Uh, that's not the case uh, at all. You know, you, you, you got to keep second guessing it. You know, is that right? Did we do the right checklist? Have we got the results that we need? Once the pilots calculated the high rate of fuel loss, they should have suspected a fuel leak. Transat 236 Heavy declaring fuel emergency. By the time they had confirmed the leak, their options were severely limited. Now they had a choice. Uh, do I close the crossfeed and, uh, and see what happens? Or do I leave the crossfeed open as, as the, as the uh, fuel and balance checklist has, has dictated? And maybe the situation will correct itself. The, the crew wasn't really sure. Captain Pichet believed for a long time that he was facing a computer error. It was only when the engine stopped that he had to accept that the fuel leak was genuine. The technological complexity of modern aircraft can help to make them safer and more reliable. But it can also lead to the problems that nearly brought catastrophe to Air Transat Flight 236. Discrepancies in replacement parts led to a fuel leak. Distrust in computers led the crew to misread the situation. These errors combined to have huge implications. Only because air traffic control initially sent the plane 60 miles south to avoid congestion was flight 236 close enough to the Azores when the crisis struck. Otherwise, it would have had to ditch in the ocean. The investigation remains unpublished. Airbus blames the pilots for mishandling the fuel leak. Robert Pichet and Dirk de Jager continue to fly with Air Transat. In August 2002, they received one of the highest honors of the International Association of Pilots for the longest glide ever accomplished in a passenger airliner. After the accident, Airbus modified its checklist in the event of fuel imbalance. From now on, the computer checks all the fuel levels on board against the flight plan. It now gives a clear warning if more fuel is being lost than the engines can consume. Rolls-Royce has reissued a service bulletin alerting all of its clients of the incompatibility of two almost similar parts. For the passengers trapped on flight 236, the trauma has left them with mixed feelings. Whatever the circumstances are, the pressure that he was under is 
tremendous. He, he got that plane down safely, only blew up eight of the 12 tires, <laughs> and saved 300 people. He saved 300 people's lives. Captain Pichet saved our lives, and um, whether or not he made an error, um, or if there was a failure of a computer, it doesn't really matter because we're alive. <laughs> Do I think he's a hero? No. Do I think he's a hell of a pilot? Yes. Thank God the islands of the Azores were there and basically saved our lives. But if that fuel pump uh, broke two, five minutes beforehand, we'd, we would have ended up into, into the water and I probably wouldn't be here to tell the story.